Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, then hi, my name is Monisha. Currently, I'm doing my core training that's residency in the specialty psychiatry here in London. Today's video is like a follow-up video to the video I made in 2020, which was about how much do I spend living here in London. Something that a lot of you all requested me to make, living expenses in London. London being one of the most expensive cities in the world. Obviously, the numbers are going to be a little high, so heads up to you guys. You guys gave in so much of your tips and advices that I decided to cut down on all my expenses and stop spending so much more. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Obviously, we are currently battling cost of living crisis. UK is amidst that. Obviously, I just wanted to crack a joke right at the beginning of the video before I get into the serious stuff and all the numbers and everything. The previous video received a lot of negativity, a lot of tips and advices as to how I'm spending ridiculous amounts of money from my salary every month living in London. And you guys are right and correct in saying that. But having said that, I should have put a disclaimer. That number is not spent by a single person. It was spent by two people because I live here in London with my husband and all expenses are split between us, not to the T. We don't exactly divided to the T but that's story for another day we do divide the bigger expenses between us so today I'm going to give you the total number divided by two for every single expense that I mentioned and the expenses obviously which is not divided between us and is only spent by me I will talk about that as well living in London has never been cheap it was expensive and it's only getting more and more expensive the property rates have gone up the bills have gone up the numbers have gone up and I thought it was time to do an updated version of the video that I did in 2020. Before I dive into the video, I just wanted to say that I know these numbers are high. I can always spend much lesser than this and save much more than this if I live in a smaller town or in a smaller city in England or in Wales or in Scotland. And I pay a lot of this money towards the postcode of living in London. But we are young. We don't see ourselves having children. And this is the life we have chosen for ourselves. If that means spending most of our salary living in London, we are pretty much fine with it. Having said that, I know this is not everybody's cup of tea, but this is just what suits us best. The numbers that I'm going to talk about right now more or less remain the same throughout the year for every month, but obviously our expenditures every month doesn't stay the same. We might spend more if we are traveling, if you're shopping, we're spoiling ourselves and things like that, or if there's some kind of an emergency expense that comes up, obviously that means the numbers would go up. But this is more or less what it looks like every month. I looked up for this Forbes article which stated the 15 most expensive cities living in the world and I'm going to list them and you can have a look of what the most expensive cities are currently as of 2020 you know living wise. All right so the first big expense of living in London is obviously rent. Rent has ridiculously shot up over the years in London. Ours has more or less stayed the same because I signed up for a three-year contract. We live in zone three. It's a one bed flat. It's a ground floor flat and we've got our own garden space. We really really like the area it would be a dream to be able to buy a house in this area it's beyond our reach currently in terms of location itself it's located at the most chef's kiss location the rent we pay is 1315 pounds and we split it between the two of us which adds up to 657 pounds 50 pence per person the second thing that comes up is council tax so what exactly is council tax it's basically a tax on the domestic property where you live and it's collected by the local authority and each council each borough has its own council council tax of every area in london varies what do you pay this council tax towards you know things like keeping your burrow or your council clean, you know, collecting of the waste bins and repairs of the roads, having, you know, amenities and extra services in every area. Obviously, there are, you know, expensive areas where the council rates are higher and there are a bit deprived areas in London where the council rates aren't that high. So the place that we say our council tax adds up to £130 a month, that's again £65 per person. Something to note about is that if you are a single occupant living in London, your council tax is lower so you can ask for a discount. So the next bill that we pay for is gas and electricity and it is pretty much self-explanatory what is gas and electricity. The electricity and the heating we use in the house in winters and all that goes up so it is £93 currently per month. I think the government put a cap which is going to change again so currently we're paying £93 and I can imagine that it's going to go up. The next thing that we pay for is water bill. Water bill is you get supply from a company 
called Thames Water that adds up to 30 pounds a month and that again we split between the two 15 pounds per person the next thing insurance for the flat so that is tenants insurance or often called as the renters insurance so in case of any damage if there's a calamity if there's any robbery if there's any sort of fire so you kind of pay monthly insurance for your flat and this also kind of covers the tenants liability that comes up to 15 pounds a month which we again split between the two which is 7.5 pounds the next thing is wi-fi so we've got fiber broadband with virgin for that we pay 31 pounds a month it had actually gone up so i called them up and had an at length conversation about how i plan on switching my wi-fi which then meant that they changed the plan and it brought down the price we were paying a bit ridiculous price on the third year of the contract so now it's 31 pounds which is not bad so the next thing that we pay for are groceries so grocery obviously varies week to week let alone month by month more or less this is what we pay for per month we have something called the gusto subscription which is a meal subscription plan which comes with pre-measured sometimes even pre-chopped quantities of food and with the recipe cards it's very straightforward it doesn't take much of time and it also kind of puts us in this treadmill routine of not thinking too much as to what are we going to cook today we have these set meals and you just are going to use them through the week and that adds up 50 pounds a week so around 200 pounds a month and we split that between the two so that is 100 pounds per person obviously we require other things like you know bread milk or tea or coffee just other basic things like you know extra veggies or extra fruits and stuff like that so that sort of adds up to also 200 pounds a month so that again divided between the two is 100 pounds per person something that dean has always told me in our relationship and also now in marriage is that do not think twice before spending money on groceries and do not think twice before spending money on transportation safety comes first and your health comes first as well so two things we don't make cuts when it comes to food and transportation the next thing this is something i solely pay for which is a bms subscription so bms stands for british medical association so it's a trade union and professional body for doctors in the uk so that subscription adds up to 29.75 a month the next thing that i pay for is mps medical protection services it's like an indemnity cover in case of any issues in case of any extra advisors and stuff like that that you need for that i paid 48 pounds a year so around four pounds a month is what it adds up to so you have access to an expert opinion and indemnity advisors basically for your peace of mind the next thing that i pay for is rc psych which is royal college of psychiatrists it used to be 158 pounds for me per year because now that i've passed my membership exams my membership fees are going to go up i haven't yet followed up on the email of doing it while i'm filming this video by the time this comes out maybe my fees will have gone up but as of now i'm paying for 158 pounds a year which adds up to around 13 pounds 16 pence a month so the next thing gmc fees so gmc stands for general medical council that's your registration fees that you pay for you can pay it yearly you can opt in the option of doing it quarterly so it's around 420 pounds a year that is around 35 pounds a month the next thing is transportation currently the way my week looks like is that i go in three days a week to my current team base i work one day from home and other day i am there on the main side so the days i'm at home obviously there's no transportation i'm working from home the day i go to the main side the main side is basically 35 minutes brisk walk from our place which i don't mind it kind of you know adds up to my exercise for the day 35 minutes one way 35 minutes coming back so that day i don't have to go to the gym again there'll be no transportation because i'm walking to the main side the three days i go into my current job steam base i spend around one pound 60 each way so basically I catch a tube that adds up to around nine pound 60 a week which then would add up to around 38 pounds 40 a month so that's my transportation money so the next segment are subscriptions the next thing that i pay for is thematic music so any of the music that you hear like just now on this channel is from thematic music and i pay for that 59.99 dollars which is around 49.81 pounds which would then add up to around four pounds a month i used to have subscription to epidemic music they honestly have much more options and variety but they are ridiculously expensive compared to thematic music i used to spend 10 pounds a month to get free music from there basically copyright free music and then i came across thematic music which would come up to four pounds a month obviously it was a no-brainer that i had to 
make some cuts in terms of getting copyright free music so i have switched my loyalties to thematic music now we have made a lot of cuts in terms of subscriptions like we have opted out of eros now and hey you and things like that there are only three subscriptions that we pay for one is netflix for which we pay 11 pounds a month then we pay amazon prime which is nine pounds a month the next thing was apple music something that i used to have subscription to which i have stopped i really miss it have now tried using spotify but i really don't like it apple subscription went up to like some 10 or 11 pounds per month and i was like oh my god this is a lot of money every month i'm spending which then means i've been forcing myself and of course i've got no choice but to listen to audible and audiobooks which has been a good thing because that means i'm sort of reading more books now instead of listening to the same playlist and same music over and over again try it spotify i just don't like it so all that is again split between us the next thing comes is health so health is basically gym so gym membership it was around like a lot it was like around 90 some pounds or something but because i work for nhs there's something called the nhs blue light discount so i use that so we got a really good discount on it and we pay 62 pounds a month which is also still high but i like our gym because it's got a swimming pool so on the days i don't want to do you know the conventional workout i want to go for a swim that counts as a really good workout as well I I think 62 pounds is a good deal for a pool and it's got a heated sauna it's got a hot tub obviously has all the facilities it's basically 10 minutes walk from our place so i think 62 pounds is a good deal the total expenses that adds up to every month that i personally pay because obviously dean doesn't pay and you know the same amount given he obviously doesn't have pma subscription or gmc or things like that or membership fees and everything so obviously his monthly expenditure is different to mine but what i end up paying every month is 1207 points which is basically around 1200 pounds a month is the cost of living here in London. This video is in no way a flex. As much as I want to be transparent about numbers, I also know a certain part of the audience might take it in the wrong way. So I'm so sorry in advance for that. But I also want to be transparent and give people an idea as to what it is like to be living in London and someone needs to basically, you know, take the hard road. I also want to be able to talk about savings or investments and things like that being an expat i don't want to throw in those exact numbers but i can give you kind of a percentage as to what my life's mantra would be for you guys you know say 100 percent is your salary it's okay to spend 30 percent of it on you know bills and expenses and cost of living and everything 30 percent should go into your savings straight up 10 to 12 percent is something i would look at if you're like investing into things then comes the part of spoiling myself so i say if you're working so hard in your life you deserve to spend that money on yourself as well i don't believe in the concept of waiting till i'm 40 50 or whatever to enjoy my money so 20 percent of my salary goes into spoiling myself whether you shop something or want to treat myself i want to go out i want to have a good meal i want to hang out with my friends so 20 percent of my salary every month can go into that and that's completely fine and the remaining eight to ten percent or whatever goes into my travel pod i absolutely love traveling and that's such an important factor in my life so that's how i have basically divided my salary every month obviously it's not exactly exactly the same every month things can go up and down some random extra expense can come up and that's fine that's just how life works but this is more or less how i would look at spending my salary every month anyway i've got a video coming up on what a doctor's pay slip looks like how much would you be earning every month and lots of saving tips and investment tips and things like that i am still figuring it out i am such a doob when it comes to these things hopefully you are on this journey with me and we can figure it out together i hope you've enjoyed today's video Video. if you did then please do consider giving it a big thumbs up and if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel then please do consider subscribing hope you're looking after yourself and your loved ones and i'll see you in the next video bye